Hi, it's Melvin again. Welcome back. It's day 50. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and bookmark this playlist and help me out by adding it to your own playlist if you're not a content creator or if you are, even better. So there's been a bit of growth. Um, this thing is longer. It's less of a pink, more of a solid red at the top. There's more defined structure. The base is more yellow. It's very interesting how it just comes out of a perfectly cracked in half seed like that. It's almost like an earthquake fault. And the seed coat itself has turned very brittle, thin, black and white. I think it was meant to decompose like that. So this is a perfect angle at which it looks straight, but actually the shoot is bent towards the sun. It's showing phototropism. So I think I'll spin the pot around. Not sure if I was already doing that at this point for uh, you know a few days, maybe two or three times. You know, every two or three days I would spin around the pot and then it would bend the other way. And then spin the pot and it would bend the other way again. So it's not really got a propensity to grow straight like you would want it to. The little fuzzy white hairs are not uh, as big relative to you know the pink tusk at the end of the first episode so it doesn't have that appearance of you know whether this is mold or not or it's clear that there are protective hairs and there's nothing wrong with this shoot it's very healthy so I'm just squirting it with a squirt bottle some 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide to keep everything sterile there is basically a fault line in there where the seed cracked in half and there's a hole there I didn't fill it up um, actually these potting mix particles are very large compared to conventional dirt well, I wouldn't say conventional it's just anything you would find outside in most environments except for maybe a peat bog so I'm just squirting water directly in there there's no point in extensive watering on the surface because that's not where the roots are um, from what we saw in the first episode it's basically a tap root going in so I just want to directly access that and soak the soil going vertically down. I assume it's gotten much longer and there's probably some horizontal expansion of the roots but not so much at this point. And this thing doesn't really have foliage so it doesn't require a lot of water. So I'm just going to spend a lot of time squirting uh, this 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and distilled water in there. So the problem with using a squirt bottle is the flow is so restricted that you're squeezing there for several minutes like I am doing now and hardly any water comes out. The positive is that it's so gentle that none of the potting mix particles, large particles, start floating around and shifting wildly which I always think is bad for root system and the structure in general of a nascent developing plant. Right now I'm using the watering can it's not too bad if there's only a little bit of water, but if it's really full, you know, watch out. Things are just going to shift all over the place. So this is some low-dose chewable aspirin, 81 milligrams, one-fourth of your typical aspirin tablet or pill. So this is dissolvable. Since it says chewable in water, I'm going to put it in this watering pail, which is a perfect recipe because normally people say if you're using aspirin for plants, it breaks down into salicylic acid, a plant metabolite hormone from the willow tree in its bark. So yeah, normally the internet recipe says one gallon of water, which is almost equivalent to four liters of water. And this watering can can hold almost a liter. You know, so if I take something that's one fourth of the quantity and mix it in, that's a, a perfect concentration. So the whole point of this is people say, um, using aspirin and dissolving it in water and applying it to plants can help. So I'm mixing it with a metal chopstick. I'm personally not an aspirin guy. I'm an ibuprofen guy. You know, Advil, that works a lot better for me. And aspirin can have some side effects. You know, it can thin the blood, which can help. And it can also hurt if you get into a violent event where you're bleeding. In plants, this activates systemic acquired resistance. Normally, when a plant comes under attack in one area from pathogens or bugs, you know, it activates through hormone signaling some kind of resistance measures that spread throughout the plant. 
So this can be acquired actually directly by applying it to the leaves but also if you water it'll get soaked up into the roots and get concentrated there and this is a naturally occurring hormone in plants I would actually recommend pre-crushing those uh, chewable tablets I mean there are still a lot of little powderous pink chunks swirling around in there so it's dusk uh, this camera is kind of autofocus happy but anyway I'm watering with that aspirin water crushed in a squirt bottle and I hope this really helps out the plant. It's supposed to help with germination, uh, prevent root rot, prevent diseases. So it's day 59. It's time for some fertilizer. So the reason I'm enacting these two measures, even though you may think the avocado plant was growing just fine, the seedling, it's because this really helped out with my two succulents, the Joshua tree and the century plant. Well, the Joshua tree remains to be seen. I mean, it's growing at a glacial pace. But anyway, in chemical form, in pure chemical form, um, you know, all these compounds appear a crystalline blue. It's not something you'd probably want to eat directly, but, you know, dissolved into the soil. These are the pure chemical forms in usable form of all the nutrients the plant needs. So that's what this looks like right now, you know, on day 59. It's uh, been nine days since I sprayed the aspirin water. I don't know if that's made a difference, but these leaves are basically yellow, which would normally be a very bad sign for a plant, but considering everything started out pink and red, you know, it's a natural progression as the pigments kick in, and I expect everything to turn a lush green eventually after maybe another week or two. So you can see all the fuzziness. Uh, the leaves are very veiny very vascular looking and there are small offshoots coming off uh, predetermined nodes so I have no idea why it develops like this but it just does like just everything just happens at once it's not like a bean sprout where cotyledons just suddenly come out and it's a few centimeters tall so I only got it this straight by spinning around the pot and hopefully the fertilizer will kick in and really help out the plant. Um, all these soils that I'm using in these pots have been pre-sterilized. So I'm wondering if because there are no natural microbes, you know, bacteria and fungi in there and archaea, etc. to help me break down these chunks of wood which essentially form potting mix. Are the plants undernourished? And I think for my succulents the case was yes. So I'm being very proactive with my aspirin application which will absorb into the leaves and stem and all parts of the plant basically because this water is saturated with it. The fertilizer should provide the nitrogen the plant needs to grow along with the other basic compounds. I'll think about how to better fertilize and provide nourishment for the plant when it gets bigger. For now it has the seed to nourish it. It's day 61. The leaves are turning green, at least two or three of them here and the rest are big and yellow. So the stem looks stiffer, hardier. Uh, there's still red leaf primordia at the nodes. I bet this would activate if an animal were to graze and bite off the leaves at the top or if I pruned. So it's looking more woody, which is what you'd expect for a tree. Although I've seen some people's saplings look very flimsy and they just grow vertically. Uh, maybe those are not properly nourished and aren't exposed to the same conditions such as wind that they are in the wild thus they have weaker stems I don't know but you can see these yellow leaves are very vascular and veiny looking getting back to the aspirin it's had a limited but very successful trial in my opinion on my succulents it prevented root rot and made them start growing again or maybe it just could be because I watered a lot more during that time that the plants recovered, they were underwatered, as hard as that is to believe for succulents. But in the past, when I overwatered, I would just get root rot and I lost three out of four Joshua tree seedlings. So the leaves are developing really well here, and I hope the fertilizer will kick in. You know, all these pre sterilized soils might be deficient in 
natural microbial activity that might help break down the wood chips and all the other components such as peat moss in there. Thus far I have very little to complain about. This has been a textbook opening for this plant. Everything's developing beautifully and very quickly, as quickly as it can go according to what I've heard and read. So it looks like we'll have several big green beautiful leaves soon and hopefully I won't need to keep spinning this pot around to have it reorient and stay straight in the sun. Thanks for watching my second episode. Stay tuned for a third, or if you're watching this well after the fact, just check into my YouTube channel and look at my playlist to see every single episode.